Seb, thank you so much for coming on in the podcast. Um, we had a lot of people view our story and like they were super interested to learn more about you and um, far more coffee and what you guys do. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so just real quick, why did you start Far More Coffee? Okay, uh, thanks for the invitation, Liam. Sure. Uh, uh, it's really cool to be here. Uh, I th- it is my very first podcast, I have to admit. There you go, so, I'm on it. <laughs> a very first one for me. Um, why did I decide to found Far More? Look, there's so many reasons behind it. And I think I've got, I feel I've got a different stories uh, behind every single reasoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but look, most importantly, uh, far more is an escalation of events uh, that see me being almost forced to, to launch far more. Yeah, right. uh, far more, in a nutshell, is we, we create it so that we're able to change the way producers and consumers connect. Right. That's all, right? Um, so the way I could see the world, uh, my background is specialty coffee. Uh, I'm Colombian. I did lots and lots of roasting, uh, green bean sourcing, education. Uh, but one thing that I noticed was still the disconnection that you had uh, from the people that's really doing the hard yards mm. and origin. And I started to become, became obsessed by it. Um, so back in the day in the streets of Melbourne where I learned everything that I do know now, um, I could see that, um, yes, okay, a lot of people were doing great things to try to bring you closer to the story, you know, Mm -hmm. but I was always dreaming about, it shouldn't just be storytelling, there should be a real connection, and Mm -hmm. I always felt that um, we were living in a world where we had certain technology and tools that were pre-existent to... Mm -hmm. um, enable us to do something like this. So that's kind of how far more um, began, you know, it was more a conceptual sort of thought, uh, then like an economical theory sort of thing, and then the, why not? What if this can happen or not? It was such a very novel sort of thing back then that I... Connecting farmers to roasters. Yeah, 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 and not even to roasters, to end consumer, it yeah. cool, you know, that's... That's so, awesome. Like physically speaking, how do you go about doing that? What are some features that allow you to connect the two two people together? Well, first of all, you gotta understand that far more it's an impact company, no? And uh, I've all, always been driven by creating impact through far more and what mm-hmm. we do when it comes to far more. So uh, back in the day, uh, we were just educating people. Liam and uh, that took a, a lot of years to, to, to complete that process, uh, to be exact, almost three years in coffee plantations okay. in Colombia where we tackled the livelihoods of over mm. 450 people. Mm. But for us, uh, at one stage in the fourth year, we were expecting to see a lot, a lot of change and ultimately all of the answers from all these producers is, guys, no matter what we learn or what we do mm. or what you preach, we cannot reach other people. All we can reach is the cooperative here and sure. that's the sad reality. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, okay, how do we go from this point and mm. try to solve this problem to try to provide uh, farmers with the biggest reach possible. So the way fundamentally that we do for our farmers is two things and, and that's to answer your question mm-hmm. in particular on how do we do to connect. So the very first one is uh, we work with the farms directly uh, from the moment there is a cherry on the trees being almost taking uh, mm-hmm. farmer is almost trying to be there tracing it and tracking it. Uh, so we became really good marketers, right? Yeah. Uh, we really want to showcase our producers uh, as the people they are, as the amazing individuals mm. that they are, but also our dream is, and the way we see each one of our producers is, they deserve their own brands, mm. right? Mm. So it's more with the concept of how we embrace these people, this person's work, and we create a brand for that person, right? So ultimately, no matter where I am, or mm. if I perish mm. or whatnot, if we create brands for people, yeah. 
that brand stays with the person, right? right? So that's one. How do we become really good marketers? Mm -hmm. uh, the second one, and in order to become really good marketers, at least for the people we represent, mm -hmm. we really have to listen to them and be with them yeah. and become almost family so that we could understand their stories, their past, you know, their present, their dreams, the future. It's like um, everything with marketing in general. You have to know what you're talking about before you can even start showing it off, showing it to more people. Yeah, yeah and they've got amazing stories. I could spend all day telling these stories. Yeah. Uh, but the second thing that we do, and most important, is, again, traceability. So incorporating technology, uh, what we currently use are QR codes. It's cool. very simple. QR codes have been there forever. Yeah. But uh, instead of rerouting you to um, shopping sort of platforms, what we do is uh, we create a QR code per person we work with, right? right? In these QR codes, you get to have access to two main things. The first one is what we call a product journey. And a product journey is becoming super popular in Europe, especially with end consumers mm. wanting to know everything about sure, the product. Sure. Where does it come from? How many miles did it travel? How yeah, many right. hands were in the process, etc. Mm. And we're able to record all this from the very beginning mm. uh, since we're working with the farm, right? Mm. The second cool thing of um, this QR code is um, that you're always two clicks away from any farmer in our network. So if you come across any of our products and there's a QR code yeah. there and you scan it, you literally could be talking with the farmer. So you can just take two the seconds. farmer. Yeah. Literally, two yeah. seconds, two clicks. That's and crazy. that's how we thought that we could we deliver the most unique level of traceability, you know, because no matter what I could tell you or what, Numbers could show you. Yeah. If you as a consumer are able to go into your phones two seconds, Instagram, we're connected and you can chat to yeah. one another and ask, is this yeah. real? Yeah. Like, that's another level, yeah. right? It's the next level. So I, say, uh, I don't know anybody else who, who offers that. I think a lot of people sort of hide their traceability with, oh, but it tastes good, you know what I mean? It's like they're focusing on other aspects of their coffee. Um, but yeah, I don't know anyone who advertises, hey, go talk to our farmer. Don't talk to us, go talk to our farmer. Like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, ultimately we don't see each other as traders, you know? Traders yeah. carry ultimately product and they're somehow, by definition, inventory people. Yeah. We see ourselves as something more than that, you know, because we're a vehicle yeah. to connect, uh, to discover, and to foster relationships, right? Mm -hmm. All what we're doing is to holding yeah. uh, everything together, you know, as well as obviously, you know, ensuring there's a lot of quality, of there's course. a lot of innovation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that both sides, all of the stakeholders that we serve in both ends, Farmers and our clients mm. are everyone, are, they're all happy and sure. well served. So yeah, what's something that you think coffee roasters in particular should pay more attention to? Tough question. Yeah. It's a loaded question. Uh, look, I will say ultimately uh, to pay a lot of attention to their supply chain and, and the truth origin of their coffees. Uh, and why is this so important? Because I come from this school of thought where I I think that everything's gonna to come to an end, you know? I right. feel that if we're gonna start taking care of not only coffee growers, but also our climate or our land, mm -hmm. uh, we're only gonna have 50 something mm -hmm. harvest in this world, you know? Yeah, so right. one of the ways for us to ensure that the, we keep this agriculture, if mm -hmm. we think that it's going to disappear, is by paying attention to our supply chain so that the people that is truly are keeping mm -hmm. the land where our products come from sure. are well taken, mm -hmm. taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. If you think a farmer's job is very important uh, for us in the future, where I, where I, I was just in Colombia a few weeks ago. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we can go yeah, into, yeah, into detail sure. about my, my trip yeah. to Colombia. But I started to think a lot of those guys are placed in points geographically, strategically 
because mm. if you think about it, it's where most of the resources of the country come, such mm. as water, mm -hmm. you know, which is pivotal for the rest of the agriculture and on and on and on. And if we don't have those farmers motivated to having really good farming techniques, sure. etc., it's, it's not just about coffee, you know, yeah. it's about taking care of the origin where, where the supply chain begins so mm. that we can actually preserve it. And I guess roosters do end up having a say in what they buy, right? So where they buy from and who they choose to partner with, that will then sort of drive into, okay, well, who's paying attention to these variables that you just mentioned? Absolutely. Uh, look, uh, sometimes we're just one step away of having literally roasters working directly, and we see it already. Yeah. Like, come on, I've customized crops for roasters in the past, and it's right. not that difficult, you know? I can gather 150 people mm. that will serve, I don't know, uh, a couple of containers a mm. year for mm. whatever account that you have, mm. and we can keep the same people continuously sure. doing this uh, for a specific roaster, yeah. on and on and on, once the relationship is built, right? Mm. Supply chain, I feel, is, is the most important, you know, okay. the, the, the very beginning, where it all mm. comes from. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, yeah, I don't want to make more controversy because <laughs> I've seen a lot of things happening in the world, you know. Yeah. I speak with a lot of people from other countries, uh, other pro large producers from neighboring countries yeah. such as Brazil and, yeah. and you don't want to even yeah. hear what goes off in the world of coffee, you know. Sure. We've sure. seen it in the past, like I think it was uh, China buying Vietnamese coffee or the other way yeah, around, yeah. you know, and yeah, it just gets messy. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if we really ensure that uh, whoever's at the bottom of the supply chain is fine, mm -hmm. and we develop that type of serious relationship, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the most important. That's where roasters could actually. It's a beautiful business, but mm -hmm. if there's no fruit, yeah. No one will True. have these businesses. So if we want to keep on this in the long, yeah. long term, yeah. uh, we, we have to think differently. Interesting. So tell us about your recent trip to Colombia. Uh, Matt, it was, it was unreal, you know, like one of the things to begin with, one of the things that I've always said is, uh, I don't know if you're aware, my background is hospitality, uh, I became a chef uh, many, many years ago with the ultimate thought that hospitality, that particular like hotels, etc., and, yeah. and that sort of field, broadly speaking, sure. will take me to travel all over yeah, the world. Right, and okay. it never happened. Wow. I, I've seen more of the world yeah. through coffee yeah. than my actual degree, right? Sure. So uh, I've always liked to say that uh, coffee has given me the uh, beautiful opportunity of actually rediscovering my own country right. and going to places where I never thought I could imagine to yeah. be in the past. Nice. But no, look, this trip was phenomenal. Um, we've got a strong focus, as I said, uh, in what could be the future of coffee. Mm -hmm. So um, we're very conscious. First of all, we needed to check on some projects that we're um, having at the moment, especially the one in the Cauca region, which I right. feel is the most important one. Okay. Um, and we were also checking on newer projects that we're sure, going to start sure. involving. So that, yeah. um, Once you're there, you have more. You know. Yeah, a lot of people, um, a lot of our clients sometimes ask us, oh, why do we only have uh, like a small sort of repertoire mm, and mm, whatnot? Mm. And uh, we kind of have to say because it's not easy, you know, mm. which we're in the other side of the world with a small company mm. and uh, it's almost like you have to go one farm at a time, right? Yeah. And you're, you know, you're, you're equally relying on each other in a way where, well, this person's asking me to grow coffee for them. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's a whole, it's a, it's a relationship at the end of the day. Yeah, you so, can, uh, back to the tree. One yeah. of the things, more, more than the actual things that I saw in Colombia, is um, we tend to bring uh, people from overseas, uh, we call it the coffee immersion trip, and it's all about just showing them Colombia through the roads of coffee and through the people that grow it, right? So usually we bring coffee enthusiasts or baristas. So or anyone, anyone can come? Yeah, yeah, anyone. I, I always say anyone can come. This is yeah. not just for industry because the ultimate goal, and I always tell the people we bring over, is I'll change your life. We're going to change <laughs> your life. 
So forget about the coffee. Yeah. You tell us if you don't come as a different person, uh, yeah. happy to give you money back. Yeah. So to me, in this trip, and, um, they were mainly uh, Asian, so Japan and uh, a Myanmar, a person from Myanmar. I feel these guys, the first Burmese to ever go to Colombia, I can sign. Right. Uh, a check on that okay uh, but it's that you know the, the fact on how we brought the world together sure. uh, it was so unique uh, having the chance of exploring this country we met up with Jason Q who's also one of the most influential people in the green bean uh, I don't know if you heard of him he's the president of the Geisha Club worldwide Whoa, like good. these guys yes yeah. it's, it's really 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 good does. And we had the chance of being together too. Then we went to see all of the thermal shop crazy things yeah. that Wilton is doing. And we love yeah. working with Wilton because he is the future of coffee. Mm. He's pioneering all these mm. processing and manufacturing. We had the chance of reconnecting with Paul Doyle, Mikava Coffees. Yeah, so nice. from a, just coffee perspective alone, you know. Yeah. Let's imagine that I'm not said the CEO of Farmer. Sure, sure. I'm just another coffee yeah, yeah. person. And the, just the fact of yourself. going through all these places <laughs> and seeing all these amazing people yeah. and drinking all these coffees and having all these discussions together, it's, it's just yeah. insane. What more could you want, right? Yeah, we yeah. met up with Carlos Escobar, who's a former yeah, Australian yeah. Brewers champion yeah. along the way. He eventually ended up using some of our coffees for his competition in well, Colombia. Yeah. So everything happened in the spam of like two weeks. Yeah, it was right. so, so it's an action cool. pack two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys doing it again soon or? Yes, we're gonna be running another one uh, next year. Yeah. Uh, hopefully a little bit earlier this time. Okay. Closer to June. Okay. So what sort of weather is it around that time of year? Same weather. Same I'm gonna change weather. Yeah, in Colombia, it's not no, like it's Melbourne. <laughs> it's it, because it's sitting on the equator. You just yeah. have rain or it's wet or dry. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I have no idea. I'm so, I'm so used to Melbourne weather where it's like you can have all seasons in one day. Maybe you should come with us. <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe. <laughs> What's the biggest issue that Colombian farmers face that you've experienced? Look, because to me it's very simple. I. I feel what farmers in general, not just coffee farmers in a country like Colombia, it's what actually generated the Colombian conflict and it's a land conflict, right? Yeah, because so it's political. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, if you ask me what do farmers actually need, mm. they need land right. to begin with. You'll be sure. surprised on how many of them actually don't have ownership of mm. their land, right? Right. They're hiring of someone or it's, it's so farmers it's, will actually lease land to grow coffee and sell that coffee 100 percent. Wow, so uh, okay. i had no idea when we ran an ngo before far more and the exporter it all began with an ngo and uh we were working with 450 people in the area of santander colombia mm. that had one particular thing in common all of them were displaced because of the war. When, when you did, right. um, or misplaced or reallocated, sure. imagine war comes to your home yeah, and you yeah. have to evict your house yeah. and yeah. disappear for years, yeah. right? But there is one time when you come back, right? Mm -hmm. And it's peace apparently, and also price, you don't even own the title of your land anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So the Colombian war that's uh, been going for hundreds of years now, almost since the independence, it's, it's got that sort of concept. People get smooth out sure. so that other people can acquire land, right? Okay. And what we see is the conflict is all around land ownership. Mm. Very few own a lot of it mm. and too many own nothing. This is such a big problem. It sounds that it's going to go well beyond just the coffee industry. This. This is nationwide, sort of. Uh, absolutely, and I, look, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a recurring thing in multiple other coffee countries, mm, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah. Like, it, it is, it, yeah, it is insane the, the way it happens. So, um, so, yeah, to me is... That's the number one factor. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Colombia, what happens is, uh, and for instance, I could have 2,000 hectares of land, right? And by law, there is one thing, because we're uh, an agricultural country, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you've got land, a produce with that land, yeah, because yeah. by producing, you can actually have people living off sure. it and benefiting sure. and more jobs, etc. They don't care, man. They rather keep it as a unused. Yeah. So and keep it in their title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. What's what do you think roasters are looking for in a green coffee importer? Just in general. I don't know. I suppose uh, that you first food that you respond. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, that you kind of have <laughs> to, my emails. <laughs> uh, some sort of history. Sure. Uh, because believe it or not, it's, it's like a very slow moving game, you know, there were certain plays and it's like a status quo, everyone's mm -hmm. happy with what mm -hmm. there is, you know, sure. so for any new player, uh, you face a lot of barriers to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, also because there's something, as you might know, called coffee contract. So mm. it's like, oh, okay, I want your product, but I cannot get it in like X amount of months. Yeah, but... it's like, who, who goes first? Do yeah. you buy the coffee and you have the coffee to then sell? Or do you sort of go the other way where you sell something and then you buy the coffee? Yeah, I'd right. say one of the fundamental things that they're all looking for is price. Sure. Uh, especially in the lower tiers of product. Mm. Mm. But... Uh, but yeah, in Australia, it's, it's driven a lot by price, okay. I feel. Yeah. More than, uh, more than even quality, for instance. Right. Uh, we have a little problem, uh, which I feel proud of having, and is that um, when we try to compete in lower tiers, uh, which mm. is a market that is not meant for us, actually, mm. Mm. Uh, we always end up with the most expensive product. The best, perhaps, right. but more expensive, yes. And you have to also understand that uh, First of all, Farmo is an impact company. We really send more money and you know premiums to our people, mm. but also we incorporate Do you mean technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. We incorporate technology, and that technology comes at a cost. You know. Sure. Yeah. Um, what else? The so it drives a higher price in the end, as well as like the quality of. The yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. yeah, reputational recognition. I feel yeah, yeah. that's also that's pretty important. So some of the things that are people are looking forward to, right. to to meeting their green bean providers. You know, sure. if you think about it, uh, on the other hand, mm. uh, looking at from a roaster perspective, mm. Mm. who I was uh, at one stage of my career, mm. it's also like um, coffee countries could be very large amounts of money and produce, a lot of things could be at stake, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly speaking, Australia could be the worst trading country uh, yeah. to play this game because it's so far away, Sure. you know. Yeah, just to uh, send anything internationally, it already has a start off price. Yeah, correct. So I, I personally feel uh, when I was roasted and looking at the smaller companies, mm. then it's like sometimes for you, uh, a big gamble is like, oof, can they actually show sure. me? Can they deliver? Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. talking about significant sure. amount of money here. Sure. So uh, look, I feel that for us, uh, what's helped a lot is um, Clearly, I'm still here with talking <laughs> to you. Uh, we had a very strong team and a really yeah. strong foundation, uh, even prior to far more. All of the education has been pivotal for us. Mm. Um, and yeah, cool. I, I suppose that that's what helped us. And obviously, having uh, all of this support of uh, mm. University of Melbourne uh, has... And like even the farmers too, right? Now that you've got the connection with that, they want to continue it's in their interest to continue so that next year they have like demand i guess right yeah so absolutely yeah, that, yeah. yeah it is as easy as uh, when you sign a coffee contract for instance sometimes you can go for a year a whole year of supply now you might get it from importers or sometimes exporters but you never know Usually, it will be a combination of multiple, multiple farmers yeah. that are constantly changing, right? But what we're saying and what you could achieve is you can have the same people producing for you year after year after year, yeah. year after year. Yeah. Right? And I guess that's a good relationship for everyone, right? Yes. And just in terms of quality, it's always going to be better. Yeah. 
Um, when I first started, uh, if we got time, uh, there is this thing that happened. Uh, there was one of these, one of the very several farmers that worked with us, uh, Sara Gutierrez, who's pretty much the coffee queen of Colombia these days. And I remember her sending me all of her samples. She's yeah. got a very large property. Well, it's in fact 10 small properties that right. all together built a, a considerable piece yeah. of land. Uh, and I would call her back, you know, and yeah. I'll say, Sarah, I cannot believe what you sent to yeah, me. Right. This is unbearable. Oh, I would <laughs> tell her off. I'm like sending her pictures. I'm still yeah. cleaning this coffee. It's here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and eventually, I was so frustrated at the beginning, but this is very funny. Yeah. Then, because I'll say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to send these samples. So yeah. I will send them still. As in, these are samples that she's given you to then pass on to roasters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're requesting for products, sure. but then, hey, what do you have? And yeah, this and that. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it was a really good way of um, kind of developing a benchmark sure. right, for what sort of product I had access and I was teaching these people. So, what were we building when it comes right. to product wise? Yeah. And are we able to have something yeah. that is considerably good that Australians mm -hmm. will take, right? Yeah. But guess what happened? I sent these coffees to multiple blind coffins, man. Right. And somehow every single place, well, they were copying for Portis, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to call for a blend, let's yeah, say. Yeah. Everyone will call back and say, mate, what was this coffee? Like, yeah. The coffee won. Right. And that's when I started to think to myself, what? But yeah. I was just telling her, oh, sure. you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and so it's like, like, you didn't necessarily believe in it at the time, but everyone else did. Right. I, I cannot believe, and it's not that they didn't believe, they just sure. didn't know the story behind it, they just yeah. looked for a product without me telling them, hey, I consider this is low, yeah. no, yeah. this is just this one, this end of the story, is. right? Yeah. But it was very interesting, the fact that because it was coming from one specific farm alone, mm -hmm. one producer looking after all these, mm -hmm. that the product eventually was way more homogeneous and yeah, yeah. somehow better than everything else that they could sure. have on their tables that is composed yeah. by God knows who, right? So it's like, it's like, in a way, you're sort of doing what they do for the top tier coffees, but this is just a better, I guess, low tier co uh, coffee as well, right? Like a different, a lower grade. Coffee. It's not that we're great, uh, right. sorry oh, to, okay. to uh, yeah, correct no, no, it, no, 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 we're yeah. talking of what people will consider, well, certain people will consider a good blend, that's well, something okay. between 83, sure, 84, sure, sure. you know. Sure, so it's not your commodity, but it still is your, your blender sort of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah that right. could come at a really good price, yeah. in yeah. bulk quantities. Yeah. Man, with Sara, you don't even want to know what we've done with her. Yeah. And I would like to, since <laughs> uh, we're in this podcast, uh, would like to know if, uh, for instance, people's ever thought of buying coffee in parchment. And uh, don't get me started about yeah. customization of milling yeah, once you yeah, buy yeah. parchment, which is something that, believe it or not, we've delivered wow. uh, to some of our customers. That's and crazy. that's truly. So, parchment meaning they, once the roaster receives it, they then mill it? No, 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 no. no. They're buying parchment from the farms directly. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then us as a service, ah, I see. we proceed to receive the crops yeah. and customize the milling of the right. product on behalf of the roasters. That's crazy. I would like to know how many people yeah. listen to this yeah, because yeah. I mean, the way I see coffee, it's so I want to oh, far more. Yeah. We want to take it to the next uh, place. Yeah, the next level. So, awesome. so where what we never seen. That's what we would like to deliver. Yeah, thanks for that. I love that last in the section. But so yeah, we've got three questions that Insta people on Instagram saw our page and we put out a little post that said, hey, we're interviewing you guys. What do you guys want us to ask? So they came back with three questions. So some of them are a little bit skew if, but someone asked what's your favorite dinosaur. So we're just gonna shoot with that. <laughs> we'll just start off with that one. My favorite dinosaur. I don't even know the name yeah. in English, I think. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, <laughs> Tri... 
Triceratops. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Tri- that's Triceratops. Triceratops, I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't the know. one with the little yeah. three horns kind of thing? <laughs> Alright, we'll get a photo up just for that. <laughs> Alright, so next question. Why did you want to focus on the green side of coffee and not just roast it yourself? Oof, I love this question. <laughs> Look, this is, from my personal perspective, um, people who don't know me, I started coffee from, from the bottom up. Yeah. Uh, literally, like, I changed careers to then coffee once I was here in Australia and I had to pretty much wash dishes at a yeah. coffee shop to then from the baristas then yeah. you know and, and same as me that was my so part to, that's why i started and then from there i've done every single yeah. thing you yeah. could ever imagine uh in saying that obviously uh, when i started making coffee uh baristas are that i feel there are certain sort of people and like characters across uh our industry, right? And baristas are always obviously where they're the front man, right? It's like when you're working your normal hospitality, chefs are at the back and bartenders are at the front, right? Yeah. Um, and I love being a barista. It's one of the yeah. best, yeah, I enjoy being a barista, you know, and serving the people and always yeah. feel that I've been a, a people's person. Yeah. Uh, so I enjoy that. But at one stage of, of my career, I kind of got stuck, it got boring, and it got uh, almost like automatic, right? Sure. I didn't have to think. So yeah. I could solve all of the problems, all these world just in one shift making coffee, right? Mm-hmm. So to me, it began of more of an escalation sure. of where is knowledge sitting, right? right. How do I take the next level to yeah. learn more about yeah. this thing that is coffee that I know? So I like I, so many people, especially this audience in particular, might be at that level, like might be in that position where they're working at a cafe, right? Basic barista, everyone's working in a cafe or yeah, we, you know, we definitely have that home hobbyist sort of audience, but people who are in a cafe, that's their day job. They're learning about coffee. They're watching this because they love coffee. There's something that they enjoy about it. They want to know more, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of... To me, it was literally, okay, I'm getting bored about this barista sort yeah. of thing, but how do I get next level? How do yeah. I even become a better barista, right? Sure. Uh, and then I realized I could learn roasting, right? Mm-hmm. If not mm-hmm. know all this roasting, yeah. I'd be the better chef and the better server. And, sure. and all together, I would deliver yeah. an even better experience, right? And then roasting, uh, and I hope roasters don't kill me. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I'm, it's one of my secret it's passions, and it's something that I still enjoy yeah. a lot these days. Different approach these days. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately for me, because I wasn't, I couldn't have multiple, like many, many origins. Yeah. Once again, it became boring, sure. right? So the yeah. coolest part of roasting to me was when you receive the first greens and yeah. the new compositions or seasoning things yeah. and you have to do all these different sort of uh, roast degrees and that's beautiful, right? Because you're like kind of learning more mm-hmm. and experimenting, etc. But at one stage, again, it became boring sure. and I fell stuck. Yeah. So same question as the barista, what's that's next great. now? Yeah. Um, so it's just a natural progression of how I've always been thirsty yeah. for knowledge, yeah. you know, and um, I've always said to myself, if I'm going to do something, yeah. I want to do it really, yeah. really good, you know, and yeah. you become better by knowing more, right? So that's when I thought, geez, the next level is Q grading, yeah, right. Okay, at least because even when I was roasting, you know, one of the things that it turned boring is I felt that uh. I had a mental block, right? Mm. And I, everything tastes like bloody coffee. Yeah. That's it, right? <laughs> I couldn't go yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I started Q grading, you know, and then Q grading ultimately showed me farms, etc. Then I became uh, one of the first um, Q processing professional across the whole globe. We were only 50 people. Whoa. And Bridgie. that's when I discovered. Yeah green is king, you know, because this is where it all begins. Yeah. So uh, 
we've got the power to like almost set on global trends, redefine the, yeah. the coffee, what's gonna happen, yeah. rewrite the new story of it, right? So for instance, we're seeing all of these new infused coffees mm, that, that mm. comes from green or from roasted, sure. right? Oh, Ultimately, it's yeah. people doing certain things at the very beginning. Yeah. So uh, that's why I feel Green kills it for me. Uh, again, don't get me wrong. I'm, yeah. I love roasting. Uh, some of the roasters who know me, they know that I'm very technical and I love it and I teach. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, to me, green is what takes it's everything. Th there's, there's way more probabilities. There's a lot of things that could be done in green. And as you can see, you know, we're really finding we, uh, along some of our farmers was the future of coffee before in coffee you could find three simple things out of every single farm. Mm -hmm. We now have people who have got over 45 established right. processes and yeah. process now involve a varietal with yeah, a yeah. specific process right. that will ultimately give you a specific yeah. profile, right? Yeah. And that's why I love playing with it, man. Uh, when I discovered the world of processing, which mm -hmm. is to me, uh, true chemistry and... Yeah. There's a real science to it. Yeah. Uh, Especially uh, like with Wilton and... Uh, yeah, yeah, look, um, those guys are now almost teaching me that. Yeah, um, yeah. Because uh, obviously they're on the field doing it every single day. But uh, to me, th that is the future of coffee and that's why even our copings are themed as far more copy in the future of coffee. Yeah. That's what we always strive to is tr really fine and conceptualize mm -hmm. how we envision the future mm -hmm. and with the small sort of yeah. tools that we've got at our reach, we're trying to execute on that vision. So, uh, Fantastic, what a great answer. This second uh, question sort of answers it as well. Uh, did you start behind a coffee machine? And if so, at what moment did you make the shift into importing? And how difficult was it to find the right pathway into importing coffee? It is funny, man, like, uh, <laughs> I define far more not as a trading company, I've always said we kind of agri-tech and within ag-tech, I tend to use the example of Alibaba, right? Yeah, right? So what we try to deliver or to become is the Alibaba for coffee and valuable crops in general, sure. right? Which is... Yeah. Sort of like the middleman. Uh, not even, there's multiple middlemen, right? right? When there's just one, there's yeah. only a concept called actually the hidden man. And it's okay. just one kind of controlling the whole thing and sure. streamlining it. Sure. But why do I like the example of Alibaba? Because of its owner, Jack Ma. Believe it or not, uh, and yes, we could come to far more and we had all these glamorous spas yeah. and we've got coffees I never imagined yeah, yeah. having in my repertoire, but sure. uh, Ultimately, I was a reject. I've always was a reject. Right. There is a very funny story. Um, when I reallocated to Melbourne, I was living in Hamilton Island and that right. was the last bit of uh, fine dining, hotel, hospitality, and that, that sort of stand. Sure. And I wanted to start doing now coffee, right? Mm. And I mean, the times that I, I think I've applied for roasting positions to every single company I came across in Melbourne mm. and no one took me so uh, yeah, right. I've actually been almost creating my own kicks yeah. every single time you know yeah. um, so that that's so that sort of driven you in a way yeah 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 uh, also I really wanted to I, I had always this drive that I wanted to help my country I I left it many many years ago and one of the main reasons was a political reason that mm. uh, kind of put me into an exile sure. in, in Australia um, but yeah like it was, it was I don't know it's just funny I, I always wanted to be a trader right uh, I was so, fascinated by these people discovering mm. these new lands and stuff mm. like that and uh, somehow the circle goes back into coffee. Okay. And, uh, what would you say to a coffee roaster right now that is looking into importing green coffee? Like the pathway that they would have to make that transition. If you want to do it right, yeah. it's going to be really tough. Yeah. 
uh, no one's ever taught us anything. Uh, okay. And actually, as I told you at the beginning of, of the conversation, it's mm. been an escalation, mm. right? Mm. I had an NGO and mm. I changed people's life, but mm. I couldn't connect them. Sure. So that didn't succeed. Yeah. We had to dilute it and we had to create something new, which is okay. how do we connect them? Yeah. Not by having an importer, mm. that's not the uh, way things go, it's by having an exporter company. Mm. And for those who don't know, far more, it's a fully vertically integrated company. Right. We export our own product. No one does that on our behalf. Okay. We do it all, right? right? So we had to learn to export yeah, right. before we even learn how to so it's a tough import, game. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's because clearly uh, when you're doing imports, uh, it changes from the country of destination sure. a lot, right? Yeah. Whereas export, Expo wouldn't change, right? Yeah. It's more requirements on documentation for the country of destination, but, uh, mm. but that's how we actually did it. Mm. Again, different to sure, everyone sure. else, you know? We, so I guess like for someone who is starting out, I guess finding somebody who is already doing that and maybe working for them, right? Working for a green coffee importer? Uh, would be a good option or...? Yes, uh, look, finance and trading in the past, if that's your background, you could be perhaps a green bean trader. Sure. Uh, I think that you have to deal with a lot of multiple variables, mm. like three different currencies, at least for me. Mm. Uh, people that operate in multiple other regions, right. they have to be wary of all their conditions, yeah. uh, political environment, sure. and, you know, it's yeah. like... It's pretty dense. Yes, yeah. uh, it might to... sound terrible, but my days, the way my days go is I wake up and I go to bed doing two things, yeah. checking on currency yeah. and checking on the price of coffee. Right. So and you've got an app for that where you can see the C price or? Uh, I've got two websites that yeah. now where I get the information, but on top of that, uh, our team, our financial team is always sending us wow. prompts on what's happening. That's crazy. Awesome. Yeah. So you can always sort of stay updated and make the more um, decisive decision making, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then add to that, that uh, you have different types of uh, sending stuff, like you mm. have air and you have mm. ocean. Mm. Mm. So mm. yeah, it is, it is it's tough. <laughs> it is tough. Uh, but look, I feel one of the, the hardest thing for us, learning is always cool, you yeah. know? Uh, we've made very expensive mistakes, definitely, I have to admit that. Uh, but as long as we learn from those mistakes, it's good. 100%. So there's definitely a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah look, that's why... Uh, <laughs> let's just compare how many cafes there, are, there exist versus how many roasters there exist versus how many importers there sure, exist sure. versus how many far more yeah. there exist, you know? Yeah. And you see that the numbers start shrinking yeah. the more yeah. we escalate, yeah. you know? Mm. When I was being a roaster, I don't know, 10 years ago, it's not that I had much choice in, when it sure. comes to companies that yeah. I could get my cream from, you know? Mm. Yeah, so, and that's a reflection and many people will do the hardest thing. So, um, yeah, Interesting. It, is, it is a very, very, you, you require a lot of combined knowledge. I feel you need coffee knowledge, finance knowledge, international commerce, sure. uh, trading, yeah, yeah. economical, like mm. all, a lot of things combined and a lot of lack of sleep. <laughs> Because you deal with people in the other side of the world, true, right? True, true, true. So it's not a stressor. It's quite literally to get in touch with these people. It's at a terrible time. Yeah, well, yeah. so people don't think coffee is that uh, I have to wake up. I've got like two type of sets I've always yeah. described yeah. Uh, where I have to wake up almost at, well, not wake up, 10 p.m. Australia yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. I'm on conversation yeah. with Colombia daytime, right? All the way till like... I need to finish. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's the way it rolls. Times I don't yeah. think anybody thinks about that. Uh, yeah, no, I don't <laughs> At least for a small team. Sure. Last question. It's a hard one. Ooh, okay. In 10 years' time, 
what do you imagine far more coffee to look like? It is so hard sometimes for little companies to think yeah. so it's far nice. in yeah. advance, you know, like I've imagined it, but uh, yeah. to see it, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's deep. No, 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 look, if we succeed at what we're doing uh, and we execute right, far more should be a world leader in agricultural supply chain. Because uh, this is something else that I reckon a lot of people don't know. First of all, we call far more, and mm. far more has got a meaning. It's not far more coffee, or Insta does, or mm. kind mm. of socials, mm. but the real name of this company is far more. Sure. And that means far mean more, right? Right. So what we're trying to do now, believe it or not, is we're validating a unique business model. Sure, so it's much more than just coffee. Yeah, yeah, dude. When, to give you an example, when I did um, five, six years ago the NGO and I could realize 85% of the people who were showing me their coffee crops, mm. because we were going to every single one of the farms, mm. they all had cacao. Yeah. And that's another super valuable crop, right? right. So farmers' focus is uh, ultimately to to be that, like an Alibaba and a purveyor, sure. not only of high-grade coffee, of high-grade agricultural crops, of high value, so think cacao. Uh, Almost yeah. like a marketplace, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's how I dream it could be, you know, because we're here to empower farmers, to mm. connect them, right, to give them the tools and the reach they didn't have in the past. And the transparency between the end consumer as well. Absolutely, right? but all together, far more is so important, that name, because within the impact, uh, we also believe that um, us humans, we look for excuses not to tackle what it's a reality, and it's called climate change, right? And from the school that feels, hey, no, 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 that's wrong, like, mm. tools have been given. Mm. And one of the main tools we've got, we've known them for thousands of years, and it's called agriculture, mm. right? Yeah. So by having and fostering and developing really unique agricultural mm. systems that work, mm. we're already tackling that problem, right? right. So yeah. far more is that, it's like, hey, how I can, were well, you're a coffee farmer, and somehow I met you rich, and I, get to educate you, mm. and now mm. you get to trade all the crops, yeah. and you so know, and on and on and on. literally not as simple as just, we sell green coffee, it's far more than that. It's always been far more than that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for us, coffee is just, as I've always said, it's our first crop, and uh, that's why we're so focused on one crop, mm. one country only, because if we uh, ultimately nail it in mm. Colombia, mm. let's say, as mm. on impact focus on grammar far more begins to try to rebuild this mm. country mm. called Colombia from its ground up through agriculture, which mm. is what they had the very best, right? They don't have the communications sure. or banking or tech, but sure. God, they, damn, they have lots of greenlands to, mm. to grow mm. if they're able to. Awesome. Right, so that's where we see far more ideally, you know, yeah. being a, a global player in the impact, sh uh, sh okay. like scene, mm. uh, through agricultural crops. Man, if I could be the who gives a crop of the future, but through coffee, get all of your coffee through us, yeah. your chocolates, yeah. you know, you name it, and right. perhaps all the cooler things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, yeah, no, thank you so much for coming on. Um, guys, if you want to get in touch with Seb, best way would be through Instagram, I'm guessing? Yes, we're yeah. really good on Instagram these days, so far.more.coffee. Yep. And we'll have it, all of that linked in the description down below. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. Um, we're going to go out and shoot this, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Liam. Thanks. It's been a pleasure.